So this short video explains what the Chinese remainder theorems do. So the Chinese remainder theorem is the um, theorem which deals with a system of congruences. So here's an example. We're looking for a solution x, which satisfies that x is congruent to r1, modulus some positive integer n1, modulus r n2, there's an r2, and finally, well, several of those, at least two, um, x is congruent to rk modulo n. And, well, we give this system, we are asked to find such x. Now, x is certainly not unique, but also x need not actually exist. So, for instance, this example shows a system of just two incongruences, that x is congruent to 1 mod 2 and 2 mod 4, but these two congruences exclude each other. So if you look at the first one, then the first one indicates that x is odd. Whereas the second one, well, it's given as a congruence modulo 4, but we can always look at congruence as modulo divisors of the modulus, so in this case, modulo 2, and it says modulo 2 is congruent to 0. So the first one says congruent to 1 mod 2, the second one says congruent to 0 mod 2, and so we have a contradiction. Now what the Chinese remainder theorem is saying is that under the condition that the moduli, these ni, are pairwise co-prime, then the system of congruences has a solution and its unique modulo, well, the thing it can be unique modulo, namely the product of these moduli. Now pairwise co-prime, that doesn't just mean taking the GCD of all these numbers, it means taking the GCD between every pair of numbers. Because if we take the, the contradicting two there and then add one congruence modulo three, then two, four, and three would be co-prime, the GCD is one, but they're not pairwise co-prime because the two and the four both have the two. So it's important to check whether we have pairwise co-prime and if they're not pairwise co-prime, then we need to be on the alert that a solution need not exist. And well, if it exists, then it is unique modulo a smaller number, namely modulo the LCM of the uh, moduli. Okay, so now that we have the theory, um, the Chinese remainder theorem can actually be put into an algorithm. We can actually compute this in practice, and here is how. So again, we're given the system of k congruences, and now I'm just putting the, the remainder r and the modulus n there, and we are ensured that all these moduli are pairwise co-prime. Now I want to find the smallest positive solution to the system. Now this n is just the product of the moduli, so that is the number modulo which we can expect a unique solution. And then we're doing four simple steps for each of these moduli. And what we're doing is we're computing an m. Now, okay, n divided by little ni just means it's the product of all the others. Then we need to invert this m modulo, the ni that we're currently looking at. So that's a step where you would be using the extended Euclidean algorithm. There's another video about that. And then it's just two multiplications. So we're multiplying this inverse of m, well, called v, we multiply it by m. Now this is a multiplication over the integers. If this was modulo ni, this would just be one, because v is the inverse of m modulo ni. And then we're adding this e to the intermediate value x. Well, x will contain our solution at the end and we're multiplying it by r. Now, if we're looking modulo ni at this x there, then every n or every m will contain the ni as a, as a product factor, except for the one which we're currently looking at. And at that point, we're getting that e is congruent to one modulo ni, and so the x at that point is congruent to ri times e, so congruent to ri. So this is the solution. Now to see an example of this, let's solve the system of equations where we have that x is congruent to 1 mod 3, 2 mod 5, and 5 mod 7. And I put on the right up there the um, algorithm that we just ran into except for the input and the output. So we're starting by putting n the product of these moduli, so 3 times 5 times 7, which is 105. And then we're just running through the steps. So for step 1, we're computing m that's the remaining of the product, so just 5 times 7, 35. And then we're taking this 35 and we're computing the inverse. Now I'm writing this um, in a one-liner as v inverse is common to 35 modulo 3, whereas on the right it says v is 
the inverse of 35, but then I would have to motivate x or y put 2 there. Now I'm doing this step in the next um, line, namely, well, if I now want to compute what v actually is, I'm looking for a number which when I multiply by 2, I get 1, modulo 3. Now in this case, 2 times 2 is 4, which is congruent to 1, not 3. So v happens to be the same as v inverse here. I've been giving myself an easy case so I could put it on the slide and wouldn't have to do an XGCD on the side. Uh, normally that actually requires some calculation. Now, one or three, there are not so many options. It's one or two, but also the other ones will be pretty simple. Okay, so then I'm supposed to take E as the V, which I just computed, times M. So that's 2 times 35 is 70. And I'm supposed to update my X from zero by adding um, Ri, which is one of the congruence up there, so x is congruent to one or three that they get the one or one term, which is one, and I multiply this with 70. And then I move on to i equals two. Now 105 divided by five, or three times seven is 21. And then I'm looking at 21 modulo five. So that's just one. And so I have another one which is very easy to invert, namely the inverse of one is just one. And then I update the e, or I compute the e as 1, which I just computed, times 21, it's 21. And then update the x by adding to it the ri, which is 2, times the 21, which I just computed. And so I'm getting 112 there. And finally, step 3, um, this m is 15, 15 modulo 7 is 1. So again, I got myself a very easy to invert number. This would normally be more effort, so I'm getting that v itself is also 1, not 7, and I'm getting that the final x is 187. Note, I have just reached step 3.4 in the third iteration. I haven't done step 4 yet. And in particular, the 187 is larger than the 105, which is the modulus. So I still need to do step 4. And so I'm taking 187 and reduce modulus 105, leaving me with 82. Now 82 is between 0 and 105, so that is the smallest solution, and let's double check that it actually satisfies the congruences. So 82 is 1 larger than 81, so it's 1 mod 3, it's 2 larger than 80, so it's 2 mod 5. And then I have to think for a moment, oh yeah, 77, so that's 5 mod 7. Okay, so we have now seen an example of how you use the Chinese remainder theorem and then you can just simply program this. We're doing this here for integers. But all the same works also if you're working with polynomials. And then the only thing you have to watch out is whether you want your solution to be more on it.